Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. The Bible says you will take of rivers, of wells you did not dug. You will take of vines you did not plant. Sir. You say you will live in houses you did not build. Um, your race will not be by stress. It will be by grace. Um, and the glory of the great king will come upon you. Listen, next week I'm going to be sharing on the glory of the Lord. Uh, as it concerns the supernatural. You see, uh, the glory will come down. I mean, that service will be so different. I'm going to do the set list of the song from beginning to the end. The kind of prayers we're going to pray, I'm going to do it from beginning to the end. Everything I'm going to do from the beginning to the end. Why? Because such a glory will come. Uh, such a glory would come. If you have your Bible, open to 1 Corinthians 14, 26. I want to show you two weeks in the mind of God from now. 14, 26, 1 Corinthians. Um, um, that's why you should come to church with the Bible. Uh, or have it on your phone. Some of you are looking at me because you are used to the screen. Glory be to God. Tell your neighbor, say, please, I'm not proud. Let me share with you. Uh, let me share with you. Let me share with you. I'm not proud. Let me share with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14, 26. Are you there? Are you there? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I am me for love for Jesus. Me, me, for go for Jesus. They are there now. I should not sing again. Okay. Bible says, How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together? Each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. He said, Let all things be done for edification. That word edification there is the word charge of built up. Is, is that, that word. So on, on the last Sunday of this month, we are going to have what I call edification service. Uh, it's going to be a spirit service. If you have a, a psalm, you have a testimony, um, you have a teaching, uh, although you have five minutes. And uh, um, if you begin to get out of the spirit, we'll collect the microphone from you. Right? Uh, but on that day, we want to have a, a spirit service. Somebody say a spirit service. Uh, somebody has a song, he's going to sing that day. You have a song, but you are going to register. The Spirit must tell you before that day. Alright, so <laughs> it's not that day you will now come and say, I have a song. No, you must have the song before that day. Alright, so you are going to register. Uh, so that word, uh, Bible says, let everything, in this same verse of scriptures, 14 to 40. Scriptures 14, 40, scriptures say, let everything be done decently and in order. Alright, so, um, but look at that, those things that are there. Somebody say, I have a tongue. Uh, but you, if you have a tongue, you must have an interpretation. Uh, so you can't come and say Makapa, lakapari, and drop it and go. No, you must have an interpretation. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. All right, so you have a revelation of God. God has showed you what will happen. Uh, Itato takes place after now, like Agabus art concerning the church. You can come that day. We're going to have a spirit service. Somebody say spirit service. All right, and I'm going to be ending my first half of the supernatural talk, right? Um, that day with what I call deep waters. Uh, deep waters is not service. Uh, so on that day we'll do spirit service by 12 o'clock in the afternoon we'll start what I call deep waters uh, I just want to share about nine principles with you that you must activate to work in the supernatural that's deep waters, I won't look at the time so it's not, everybody's not invited, only those who want to get deeper with God, they are the ones invited for that service, so after service you can go home after spirit service, but we'll stay for deep waters, and after that time uh, we're going to now do practical it's going to be like the practical school of ministry Somebody listen to me. Uh, so we're going to do practical. You are going to lay hands on somebody and you see the power of the Lord move on that person. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to release signs and wonders. Uh, step into it. Uh, somebody say it's a practical school. Uh, the Lord said to me as I was going to Ibadan uh, about two weeks ago, he said it is time to take these people with you. So I want to take you to deep waters. Um, um, where you are is ankle deep. Some of you have never stepped into the waters. But I want to take you to a water where you will not be able to walk, but you are able to swim. Somebody say, I'm only a keyboardist. No, you should play keyboard and people should be falling under the anointing. We are stepping into a realm that is greater than the one you have seen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, let's go to God's word today. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Long greetings. Long greetings. John chapter 11, we read verses 17 to 27, 38 to 44. And then I read John chapter 14, verse 12, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Hallelujah. 
Amen. By the time I'm already dead, we will be ready to go home. I just, I just say some things. Amen. Do you believe that? Please don't. Amen. John 11, 17 to 27. All right, the Bible says, when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Some people have been comforted. They are comforting you, don't worry, it's like Nigeria, there's no job. They are comforting you already. They said people had already come to comfort these people. Now Martha, was soon, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, now look at that. I want you to underline that if you have a Bible. Underline that. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that they will rise again at the resurrection at the last day, Jesus said to him, the resurrection of the life, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe these things? So, uh, verse 27, she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is come into the world. Let's jump to 38, uh, and then we read verse, uh, let's go to 38, and then I read to verse 44. Are you there? The Bible says, Then Jesus again groaning himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was there, said to him, Martha speaking again. He said, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eye and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this. So he was saying that I shouldn't even have prayed. I shouldn't even have spoken loud. But because of your sake, I said it. All right? That they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said this, he would probably have just said what he said now. He said, cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died. How many days had been dead? How many days? And he who had died came out bound and and foot with grave clothes. Normally, if you are bound with grave clothes, you shouldn't be able to come forth. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, lose him and let him go. Are you there? John chapter 14, verse 12, very quickly. John 14, verse 12. Are you there? The Bible says, should I come down? All right. Bible says, John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do. He didn't say the work I will do. He said the work I do. That is present continuous. Uh, that means there is a work I am doing right now. Is that, do you understand what I'm saying? He just said the work I do while on the earth. Uh, he said this work will he do also and greater works than this will he do. Because I go to my father. And the next verse says, whatever you ask in my name that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will also do it. Go very quickly to Second Peter, where we just ran this whole thing up. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1, and then I read verses 3 to 4. Anchor verse supernatural living. Bible says Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The Bible says his divine power. What did he say? Has given us. It didn't say will give us. It didn't say we plan to give us. It didn't say will give us in the future. Scripture says has given us. So, do you understand that? Uh, if I've given you something, I've given you. Right? It's not a promise. Uh, scripture says he has given us. Uh, according to Bible now say through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. That means that you will receive from God what you are knowledgeable about. Sir. Your access is based on awareness. Sir. If you do not know, you cannot have. What you know is what you can possess with God. Bible say through the knowledge of him. Through what is who is him there? Jesus Christ. Through the knowledge of Christ who called us by glory and by virtue. Now listen to this, he said, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, uh, that through this you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, even through lost. What a long, long reading. Are you still here? Yes, you have not gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go very quickly 
into what we have today. The title of my sermon is Dimensions of the Supernatural, the Person of Jesus. The Dimensions of the Supernatural, the Person of Jesus. All right, so if you're writing Dimensions of the Supernatural, and then you do a colon, and then you do the Person of Jesus. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word, we give light, give understanding to us as simple folks who've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of very right hand and write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. Uh, in Jesus' matchless and beautiful name, I pray. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Amen. All right. Apologies for... You're not going to have slides today. Apologies. 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 Um, all right, so let's 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 go together, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I I when I talk that this way, I can be very fast, so I'm trying to calm down so that I I don't go like a car uh, on fire. And they're saying, "What's he talking about?" All right. Be paid for it. Tell me, look at your neighbor and preach like a man on fire, like a man living in the supernatural, and say, All that you need, that you need is Jesus. Jesus. Now, with the way you said it, they won't call you. You have invitations. You need to say it with an anointing and with a grace upon your life. Look at somebody and say, All you need, All you need is Jesus. Jesus. Matter made a statement that gets lost in the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Martha made a statement that we all must learn to make because it's a statement of fact. It's a statement that is based on the truth of God's word. He made a, she made a statement she was assured of. She was certain and fully persuaded about. But because many times what we see is that we read the book of we read the book of John, especially chapter 11, and we see the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead. And that's a miracle. And miracles have a way and have a dimension of just making us fix our face on the miracles and we forget the things that were said. Martha says something. He said there would not have been need for this miracle. If Jesus was here, my, son, my, 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 my brother would have been alive. If Jesus, he asked her, she told her, he said, if you have been here, death would not have had power over him. If you had been here, death won't come to my house. If you had been here, Nothing would have died in my hand. If you had been here, I would not have buried my brother. If you had been here, nothing would have happened to me. She knew for a fact that death couldn't have won in his presence. In his presence. She knew if he was there, Lazarus couldn't have died. She knew. She knew. And her faith wasn't misplaced, but appropriately placed. Jesus' person and presence unlocks the miraculous. Jesus' person and presence unlocks the miraculous. When he comes, he meets you at your point and your place of need. When he comes, he meets you at your point and your place of need. I do not know of any other person who has the ability to solve all of our problems. sir. Whatever you need, Jesus is sufficient. Whatever you need, that's the simple message. Whatever you need, Jesus is sufficient. I know some of us are people in high places. You probably have somebody who can meet your emotional needs. You have someone who can meet your financial needs. You have somebody who can meet your physical needs. But I have not found anybody on the surface of the earth who can meet all of your needs. I have not met that person. Your wife may be able to meet some of your needs, but your wife cannot meet your spiritual needs. Listen, there are needs that only Jesus can meet. He is the only one who is all sufficient to meet all of even of our needs. But as I read through the pages of scriptures, I saw a king, and Jesus is, the, is his name. We sufficient. We sufficient to meet all our needs. Wherever he went, he did good. You know that song? That old gospel spiritual? Wherever he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he healed the lepers. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Anywhere he went, my God was doing good. That's not just a song. That's a testament of the person of Jesus. It's a testament to his name. It's a testament to his person. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He went to Cana in Galilee. 
and there was no wine. Disgrace was averted because Jesus came. He came to the room. Disgrace was averted. He went to the house of Peter. Jesus went to the house of Peter. And the mother-in-law who was sick became old because Jesus came into the scene. He went to Lazarus' grave. And Lazarus was four day dead. I mean dead, dead, dead. Rose to life. He went to Nain. He went to Nain. And there was a widow whose son was going to be buried. But because the person of Jesus went in. Jesus went in. That boy came back to life. Because not Nothing dies in his presence. Nothing dies in his presence. Listen, when he came upon the when he came on the scene, they were going to stone a woman caught in the very act of adultery. But because his presence came, grace found the woman. His presence. He passed through Jericho, healed two blind men. Jesus went to the region of the gatherings. And there was a man who was demon possessed. They are chained him. He will cut off the chain. How do you have that kind of a person? Tie him to rocks. He cut it off. Take the rocks and smite himself. Smite himself with the rock. For Jesus came. The very presence of him. Who is all things. Came. Cast out the devil. Asked what is your name? He said you are asking us our name. He said we are many. You know we confess that we shall be many. May demons not be many in your life. The Bible says, they say, our name, we are legion. We are many. Oh, Jesus is all that you need. Mark chapter 5, 1 to 17. He casted out those devils. Sent them into pigs. They were so crazy. The demons were so crazy that when they entered into the pigs, the pigs could not stay alive. You know, people say, you know, that goat is possessed. People say that dog is possessed. There are levels of possession that the dogs cannot be, cannot be alive. They can't. When he entered to the pigs, the pigs ran. They flee into the sea. Somebody said, did they die? No, they lived. Oh, they died, of course. That's to tell you the kind of madness that was in a man. That when the thing left and entered into pigs, pigs could not stay alive. Amen. Look at him and say, Jesus is all that you need. Peter summarized it very well and awesomely, appropriately. 1038 of the book of Acts. See, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Bible said, who went about doing good and healing all were oppressed for God was with him. You see, what the world needs is not more messages or more preaching. What the world needs are people who carry Jesus. Are people when they arrive on the scene, they bring Jesus with them. Huh? Because if Jesus can do these things, you can also do these things. 14, 12, John, we read it. He said, greater works than this shall you do. I tell people, live greater works. Let's first of all do the works that he did. Because the work that he did, if you can do it, is enough. He cast out devils. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He preached the message of the kingdom. Many were saved because of him. I think that's enough. In fact, if you do that, you are a God's general. Five star. Five star God's general. Jesus hearing shows us a pattern. A dimension of the supernatural that is possible for you and I. All the things that were written, were written for our learning and our instruction. Now by Jesus, all of those things are possible. There is a dimension of the supernatural that is possible because Christ lived and has shown us an example. John 14, 12. He said, greater works than this shall you do also. Therefore, if Jesus saw healing, you can see healings. If Jesus cast out devils, you can cast out devils. If Jesus taught people with simplicity, authority, and clarity, you can do the same. If Jesus walked in signs and wonders, you can walk in signs and wonders. If Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, you can also be anointed. Let me show you in scriptures how I know. John 13, 15. Bible says, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done for you. He said, I have shown you an example that I, as I have done, so you should also do. Very clear. 
Jesus said, as I have done, as you have seen me acted, you can also do. Say, I have shown you an example. The Bible is full of examples for the believer. First John chapter 2 verse 6. He who says he abide in him ought also to walk as he has walked. He who says he abides in him ought to also walk as he has walked. Not as he will walk. As he has walked. I remember the first time my father and the Lord were there to cast out the devil. He didn't even know what he meant by casting out devils. He wanted somebody to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And as he stayed in front of him, the lady stayed and said, Receive now the Holy Ghost. Instead of her to receive the Holy Ghost, she started manifesting and rolling on the floor. So she knew, he knew that this is not the Holy Spirit. Something is here. He quickly took the scriptures and said, What did Jesus do? He said, Jesus said, Go out of him. So he began to say, Go out. Go out! Go out of her! Go out of her! And the thing left. Because as he has walked, we can also walk. Do you understand that simple word? When Jesus got to the sea, river, he couldn't find any boat. Are you following what I'm saying? He couldn't find any boat and he wanted to go to the other side. Jesus just stepped on water and started walking on water. Somebody said, but that's gravity. What happened to gravity? He was the creator of the law. Gravity does not concern God. It concerns you. Because when you live in the supernatural, logic ceases to exist. It ceases to exist. Why? Because you are on a different level of logic. You see, the supernatural is logical. It's not just your logic. The spiritual has a law, has a dimension, has a principle. It is not just your way. Amen. Someone say, I don't believe in this supernatural thing. It's okay. Do uh, you, you, you have a phone? Do you have a phone? You have a phone? You go on Instagram? Do you? Raise your hand. Instagram, please. Raise your hand. TikTok. Amen. Did you see that video of people who wanted to do the bridge engineers like Samuel? Did you see them? Did you see the bridge um, on Tom Milan Bridge? How they were sacrificing animal? Did you see that? How is that logical in physics? Did they teach them that in physics? In engineering, when, when they taught you engineering, they, they said, uh, so when you, when you do building, I mean, they taught you building and then they say you pull blood on all of those things uh, and then you get to another level. Mommy, what that is really? They are not joking with you. you see, it, it, take, it takes, it takes a, a level of spiritual ignorance to think that you are alive because you are alive. There are spirits that decide certain things. You can vote, but the territorial spirit, if they are not conquered, you will not win an election. You can have all the equipment and want to build a bridge over the water. If the spirit in that water says you are not doing it, your equipment will be breaking down. So when we talk about spiritual, you see, that is why Christianity is so losing its relevance. Because when people tell pastors that they have certain spiritual experiences, they say, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, you not go as psychologists like this. The way you are seeing things. But when those people go to new age movements, go to which can say, oh, that's a word. You are open to a word. And they start telling them things. People are interested in supernatural. That's why reporters sold a lot. That's why movies on which it says, says a lot. Because people are curious. Because they know that what has been going on in their family is not normal. If you cannot explain it to me that my father did not get high blood pressure until he got rich. <laughs> so the high blood pressure killed him. What happened to high blood pressure when he was not promoted? The moment he got promoted, he got high blood pressure and he died. And then somebody told you that, uh, you know your dad, they just put something on the chair. For him to sit down in the office. You don't want to believe it. For something you believe it. Because you see the supernatural and the spiritual world is very real. That you have not seen angels does not mean there are no angels. You see the reason your parents tell you not to go back to your village. Is not because they are not born again. It's because what they saw. They saw power. Supernatural power. Are you following what I'm saying? They saw a woman fly. Really fly. Not, not this one you are doing in movie. They, she, they saw 
If you, your, your parents are young, ask your grandma if she's still alive. So that when we say that you are a believer and then God has conquered and given you greater power, it is that you can know who you are and you can use it. Because if you don't use it, they will still oppress you. If you have a generating set and you don't use it, there will still be darkness in your house. Even though, eh, you know, Nepal will do their own. Yes, if, if you start it up, then there's light, there's power all around you. The same thing you've got to do. You've got to energize and kickstart the power on your inside. If you do not reign over devils, devils will reign over you. My dad went to preach in our, in our village. And as he was preaching that day, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw that some people came to church and they were sitting on others. No, you don't get it. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. <laughs> he came to church just where you are seated. People were laughing people on their head. That means people sat down on people's head. So that you get home from church and say, I'm so tired. Throughout the service, you are you, somebody you are loading somebody on your head. Throughout the service. He said, he said, God, what is this? <laughs> God said, that's why you will see back pain, ache, neck pain, ache. what you are carrying. Listen, there are things that if I say it will scare you. I don't want to say them. But I want to tell you that you have power that is greater than those things. But if you don't use it, you are in trouble. I said last week, I was not able to emphasize it enough. That sound dynamic is one of your greatest assets to winning in life. If a believer does not speak, he's going to be defeated. There is no two way about it. You can pray, oh, you can worship, oh, but if you don't speak, you will live a defeated life. Because angels only answer to your voice. Angels only do their command. Except you make sure that through your word you guide your territory. You see, when lions wake up in the morning, what the lions do I know there is a Twitter thing that's a lion or tiger. But you see, what the lion does is that the lion roars. One of the reasons the lion roars is to mark out his territory. To mark out his territory so that all other guys in that pride will run away because he's the owner of that pride. When a lion roars in the morning, every other animal starts fleeing. Somebody says the lioness. I don't care, he's the lion. You roar now, whether you're a woman or a man. The gist is that when you wake up every morning and there is no roaring from your place, demons will chill out with you. You like that word, chill out? They will. Therefore, I tell believers, when you wake up first in the morning, there must be a territorial assertion. You must assert yourself. We are alive, we are awake. Glory to Jesus. It's a glorious day. When you say things like that, you have marked out your territory. But when you go out and then make a pot, you know the problem with pele, pele, pele is it, it terrifies the devil, but it, it doesn't give a command. Because demons can't hear your tongues. They can't interpret it. It terrifies them. Pray in tongues or prophesy in understanding. Somebody understand that. The supernatural. It is what controls the natural. Somebody say he slept and he died. You will not sleep and die. Let me continue here. I said, Jesus said, the works that I do shall he do also. There are two kinds of work. Number one, the works Jesus has done. And then number two, the work we are to do. There is what we call the finished works of Christ. That's the work he has done. And then the second thing which is called the work we are to do. That means if you don't do it, it will not happen. You can marry a woman. You won't get pregnant except you do it. Are you following what I'm saying? As it operates in the physical, it also operates in the spiritual. There are certain works you must do by yourself. Grandma cannot give you food. And then you are praying, God let me eat it. God let me eat it. When you are tired, you carry this and start eating it. 
There are works that must be done by you. There are works that Jesus will have to do. The Bible says he is seated. The, for that position tells you the work is done, he is seated. But there are works you have to do. Look at him and say the works you have to do. But let me say this to you very quickly, that the works you have to do, you can't do it except you have a revelation and knowledge of the work he has done. It is the work he has done that gives you authority in the spiritual to step out and start doing things. So when I tell people, why are you not working in the supernatural? I do not, I'm not angry with them that they are not because I feel like they don't know. Because when they know, they will start working in it. So you first of all must possess a knowledge. And that's why the Bible says, uh, true knowledge will have become partakers of the divine nature. If we do not have that knowledge, we cannot walk in the divine. So it's important to understand what are the finished works of Jesus. What has Jesus done for me? And I've seen this operational as I pray for people, as I do many things. Uh, I found out that the knowledge of the finished works of Christ will embolden you to walk in the supernatural. It will cost it to give you confidence. Why? Because Jesus is the link to the supernatural. Now, can I quickly just run here? What are the knowledge you must possess? This knowledge will do you good as you are praying for somebody. It will do you good as you are certain things for yourself. It will do you good as you begin to proclaim certain things for yourself, the knowledge of the finished work. Uh, and this is the dimension of the supernatural that, okay, you say, you know what, brother? I want to walk in the supernatural. You can't walk in supernatural except you possess this knowledge. Because fear will come except you possess this knowledge. Glory be to God. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Number one, first knowledge you must possess is that in Christ you are forgiven. I'm forgiven. Isaiah 53 verse 5. The Bible says he was broken for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities. Nothing hinders us from walking in the power of God. Like our past sins and iniquities. I can't cast out devils. So I have done five abortions. Naturally, you should run from devils. You should not be casting them out. Naturally. Because you know that you have certain things in your cupboard. But the Bible says, it was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for your peace is upon him. By his stripes. Listen, dear friends. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3 and then verse 19. Very awesome portion of scriptures. The Bible says, repent and be converted. He said, and your sins shall be blotted out. And times of refreshing will come to you from the Lord. He says, repent and be converted. And he says, your sins shall be blotted out. What is that word blot out? It means to erase. It means to completely eradicate. It means to clean. I wish there was, I was going to bring it, I was going to bring it. A whiteboard here today. And we're going to write the sins of people like fornication, masturbation. And you see, what you believe is that when the Lord says, I've forgiven you, what you think is that he says, I'm going to look at that sin, but it doesn't count anymore. That's what we think. I'm going to look at your past, but it doesn't count anymore. But that's not what the Lord does. What the Lord does is that he blots it out. He erases it. So that even if you point and try to remember or remind God that, listen, I have done seven abortions. See, I have three, I, I, I used to have seven girlfriends. See, I used to do this. You are, you, God will say, I still can't remember what you're talking about. I can't. Because he had erased it. As far as he's concerned, that part of your life does not exist anymore. If you don't have that knowledge, you can't be empowered in the supernatural. Because you see, these demons we are talking about, this evil spirit we are talking about, their primary work is to condemn you. Their principal work is to convict you. Have you tried praying for somebody before? And you say, you... <laughs> Look at that movie you watch. Your heart is bad. Was it not you that was... Ah, no, you shouldn't try this. 
Fear will now come truly and say, let me copy a few. We can't do this thing. It's because you have the mindset that God only look at your sin, but he doesn't count it. But that's not what scripture says. Scripture says it's blotted out. It's erased. You see, I, 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 when they write certain things, there's, there's something called tipex, right? If you put tipex on it, do you know that there's a way you can clean tipex and see what is on that? God doesn't use tipex. He doesn't use tipex. He doesn't. He, he takes it all away. He cleans the board so that you have a clean slate. Somebody says, how is it that I cannot walk? Have a clean slate. How is it that I can order things and it becomes so? Have a clean slate. Somebody says, I wish I have a clean slate. No, sir. And you don't wish. You have it. That's what scripture says. I wish I have a clean slate. No, you don't wish. What are you wishing? We don't wish when scriptures are spoken. There's no need to wish. Scripture has spoken. The Bible says, Isaiah 44 verse 22. It says, I've blotted out as a thick cloud their transgressions. I've, I've taken it away. And as a cloud their sins. Have you seen cloud? Sometimes you will see it. And then you go out. It's no more there. God Forever. I even I am the one who blot out your transgressions for my own name's sake. He said, I'm not doing it for you, for my own name's sake. Somebody say, Boss, sir, does that include my family? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That includes patterns and causes. It's undo them all. It's undo them all. I told you about that woman who, whenever they get to 40, they die. Whenever they get to 40, they die. So I said, I don't believe in supernatural. What's not killing them? 40. The father died, the mother died. 40. Hallelujah. Is this the way we'll continue? Yes or no? Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is going to be good. Come and release me. Abi, does it make sense to now have one thing? Post is expensive. Amen. Don't tell me you can't hear me because this is a the action will reduce now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So, so I was killing them. But the man, woman, you see, they will tell you, the devil, nobody reports in the supernatural, even in the clovens of witches. They don't report you, or they don't act on your case, except there is somebody reporting you. And the person must speak. Ah, she, she did not greet me. She bought things for everybody. They will add to it, but they have to talk. They can expand it, but they have to talk. Therefore, when you are also coming to the courtroom of heaven, you must speak. You must speak. That woman, I had to see that down and say, listen, whatever your parents have done is forgiven. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. That word is the word pistis in the Greek. What does it mean? It means he has returned to the original formation. What God made at the beginning, pure and whole, is what the man has returned to. You are not a better version of yourself because you became born again. You are a new version. You are a new version. It's a new creature. Whole things are past. All things are new. God said your sins and your iniquities. He said, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, 10, 17. He said, there are sins I will remember no more. When somebody forgets, is, is that amnesia? God has chosen to have divine amnesia because of you. Somebody said you can't be blessed because of what you did. He's reporting you to God and God is saying, what are you talking about? No, she wore red skirts that day when she went to that guy's house. I said, what are you talking about? Divine amnesia because of you. A Duma Kaposia, divine amnesia. You need to write that. The Lord has divine amnesia concerning my sins. 
Nothing they want to say or do. The Lord said, you can't remember. He said, their sins and their transgressions, I will remember no more. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord did not impute sin. Romans chapter 4 verse 8. Because he chose not to. Number two. You see, when you go with this confidence, this is the confidence we have. What's the first one? If you forget in Christ, just say I'm forgiven. What's number one? I'm forgiven. Number two, in him you are healed. Listen, when we talk about the Lord will heal, the Lord will heal, we are not talking according to scriptures. The Lord has done it. Is there somebody sick here in this auditorium? I've come to announce to you that God has healed you. You don't understand. I've come to say again that the Lord has healed you. Why? Because when it comes to these things, Isaiah chapter 53 and then verse 5, he says, by his stripes, you are healed. When Peter said it in 1 Peter 2 verse 4, he said, by his stripes, we were healed. Isaiah was speaking as it concerns what Jesus will do, but Peter was reporting what Jesus has done. Peter said, by his stripes, we were healed. That means that your healing is done. Somebody does not get ill by the sacrifice of today. He gets ill by the sacrifice of 2,000 years ago. Now, let me say this to you that you're not ill because Jesus died on the cross. Don't be shocked. You are not ill because he was buried. You are not even ill because he, he rose again. What gets you healed? And that's why every event that led to Calvary was intentional. Everything that was done was not wasted. Bible says, and by his stripes. How many did he receive? 39. 39. If there was no stripes behind him, there was, there's no healing for the church. If there was no stripes, there was no healing. But the certainty of the stripes is the certainty of your healing. Echo Shapalia. But the certainty of that stripe. So every time you are sick, you don't appeal to his face, you appeal to his back. Because it is at his back that the price was paid. The first one came, that was malaria. The second one came, that was general change. The other one came, that was cancer. The other one came, that's typhoid. The other one came, every sickness, the one that they will soon discover, he took care of it. I hope you understood that when Jesus died, there was no cancer. When he died, there was no genotype had not even become an issue. <laughs> Jesus did not pay the price for the present. He paid the price for the future. Let them discover what they want to discover. It's all taken care of. It's all taken care of. You see, this sermon and this message, you may not need it now. You know, people, I see believers... When they are old, they don't want to hear about him. They don't because they feel they don't need it. You need it. Not because of you, because of others. Not because of others, because of you also. Because a day will come that the devils will come and ask you. And you must have an answer. You see, when the question is asked, believers must respond with an answer. When the question is asked and you are looking for an answer, you are already late. That's why I'm equipping you right now. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Lord John 2, as your soul prospers. Exodus 15, verse 26, he said, I'm the Lord that he led thee. 23, 25, Exodus, the Bible says, you will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And he will take sickness away from thee. Look at your neighbor and say, there's no sickness in my house. Oh. You see, when I say you see something, I, I speak prophetically. So your parents might be sick before. But declare it now. There is no sickness in my house. Sickness. Sickness. I'm talking about supernatural here. When John told us a story, how he went to the U.S., 
And he doesn't sleep in somebody's house. He doesn't sleep in anybody's house. Because there was a time he slept in somebody's house and they almost shot him. So he sleeps in an hotel. But this couple, <laughs> crazy things happen in ministry. Amen. But this particular couple begged him and said, you know what, our house, we just built it. Fantastic, please come. Just sleep one night. Sleep one night. Sir, please sleep one night. And he said, okay, I will sleep. They will come and pick you. Everything you need is in the hotel. Just sleep one night. And that day, he slept in their house. And in the morning, he said, gather together. Let us pray. I am on my way. And he slept on that mattress. He didn't know anything. Their, their daughter, who was by this time in college. College is not I think you know. They call it college. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a Diagos community secondary school. So it was like in the uni here. The girl bedwets. So they bring the, they went and picked the girl and said, you know what? Just sleep on that bed. So when the man, when Reverend George was coming, they actually bought a new mattress because that mattress had been soaked with, with, with urine. And so they brought the woman, they brought the lady woman. I said, you've changed my mattress. I said, yes. Just sleep. And she slept there. First night, nothing. Second night, nothing. First month, nothing. And since that time, he stopped. You know why? Someone lived supernaturally. He did not even know that went out of him. He didn't know. When they now saw him, he came to the country again. And they came and said, sir, you did not know why we said you sleep in our house. Our daughter. Our daughter. You can activate the supernatural even without the person who has it knowing her. The woman with the issue of blood went and touched the hem of her skin. And Jesus did not. She was ill before Jesus knew. The Bible said, what happened? Jesus knew virtual had left him. And live in the supernatural. It's an understanding. When I come here, I carry Jesus. That's why I say it's the person of Jesus that transforms. It's the person of Jesus that transforms. Emmanuel is not the name of a church. It means we carry him. It means God with us. He said, behold, I'm with you always. That's the promise of the Christ. Therefore, when I carry him and I go into a place, uh, I told you when we started that the presence and the person of Jesus is the key to the miraculous. Uh, therefore, when I come into a place uh, knowing that I carry the Christ, miracles begin to happen. They don't employ me and the business goes down. It goes up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't date me and not enter riches. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not me. It's my family line. Whenever I, you marry me, all of your family things begin to happen. Miraculously, my brother. It's, it's an understanding you must possess. We are not stagnant in this line. And Jesus got to a place he was stagnated. He wanted to get to the other side. There was water. He just stepped on the water and he began to walk because he can never be stagnant. You can never be stranded. You can't. It's an understanding. It's an understanding. Somebody following what I'm saying today. It's the Lord that heals you. So, why is it that when you pray for people, you believe they are going to be healed? Because Jesus has paid the price. Jesus has paid the price. Except you have this understanding, you can see healings. You can see miracles. He's paid the price. He didn't waste it. They couldn't just beat him for nothing. They beat him for me. He was tricking for me. I don't care whether you are here or I was beating for me. I take him personally because he took me personally. Why do you shout Jesus? I should shout you. Can you take one of those stripes for me? One. One. One day when he starts, we're going to share about how he looks like. How the stripes look like. The teeth. The bones. What it means. Just one tear like this, you will never walk again. One. He just give you one. He took 39 for me. It can't be wasted. Typhoid cannot stay. You, some of you, you romance your sickness. Because people say, Pele, Pele is like your God to you. Have us, Pele. It's the time of the year for cold. Pele. He asked my attackers, come. Pele. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, and that thing is very expensive now. That healer. Oh, sorry. We, we, we become a people who are not irritated by what Jesus died for. I'm irritated. 
I look at my finances. I cannot, I should not be spending money in the hospital when Jesus has paid the price. Something should get you angry. You are the healed of God. Shout it, I'm the healed of God. Hallelujah. You need to understand this truth. The God's general in South Africa in the time where the whole world was under an attack. There was a virus attacking them. I've forgotten his name. Eh? Yes. The plague. What's the name of that man? Yes, John G. Lake. John G. Lake, there was a plague. And John G. Lake, he was in South Africa. John G. Lake said, this plague does not get into my house. Everybody was covering themselves. It was just like COVID. People were dying. John G. Lake said, I want to prove to you that I carry the life of God. And because that life comes, no virus can exist with that life. They went to doctors. And they, through life story, and they took, you can search it on, on Google, you'll see that. And they took this virus. They took it out and put it in his hands and the virus died. It died because the Zoe, you know I told you that nothing dies in his presence. The Zoe was in him. The Zoe was in him. I remember doing COVID. I was not reckless, but I knew it like I knew my name. I can't catch COVID. What is that? What is that? The life of God. Somebody say, at that time, we you know, pastor, we stop laying hands on people. We speak. You are healed. You are healed. I mean pastors. Pastors. That's why I respect bishop. Bishop say we will do Shiloh. And nobody will have virus here. Yeah. The governor told him, if there is an outside, how do you people call it that time? Outbreak because people came to come to Shiloh, will lock down your church. There is a God in the heaven. They did it. You are locked down in your house. They went to Shiloh. Nothing happened. There is something about his presence. Something about his presence. There is the life and the healing in his presence. That's the door to the supernatural. Jesus himself. Oh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a word will pass without being fulfilled. Mark 13, 31. HIV will pass away. Cancer will pass away. Typhoid will pass away. Hallelujah. You know, you, polio is not your problem. If you had lived in the 50s, you would know polio was an issue. But it has passed away. But the word of the Lord remains forever. The Bible says, who is joined? Whoever is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. First Corinthians 6, 17. I can't be joined with him and have sickness. No way. When we are done living, we will die. But we will not die because of sickness. I thought somebody would say his own too. <laughs> you see, that's why pastors live long. Because you hear us say it and you laugh. The pastor say it, say your own. And we have houses I did not build. And you hear them saying, What if Pastor Lane? You know, because I will tell you people, they will do it. You have to keep saying it also. Do you understand what I'm saying? You won't marry an animal, yeah. you will marry a good man. Yeah. Glory be to God. Let's go very quickly. Number three. In him you are made righteous. You know 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. The Bible says he made him who knew no sin to become sin. That we through him might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come. See me come. So this one you are not falling. He's teaching. He made him who knew no sin to become sin. So, he was Jesus. You know, that's why I called him my light. For those of you who believe that is Jesus is why Jesus. It's okay like that. All right, so. And I'm right. <laughs> no, no. Now, he made him who knew no sin. So, this is Jesus. He was sinless. He didn't fornicate. He didn't masturbate. For those of you who say you have the anointing of Christ and you are still masturbating, that's not the anointing of Jesus. That's the anointing of a village. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> he made him who knew no sin. You know what happened? He didn't have to sin. God just gave him sin. 
So when God looked at Jesus at the cross, that's why the Bible says, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The reason God forsaken me because the Lord's face was so holy, he cannot behold iniquity. And for that moment on the cross, Jesus had become iniquity. Not because he did anything sinful. He became iniquity so that God could not look at his face. God had to turn his face away from him. That's why he said, why have you forsaken me? So he became sin. So that when the father saw him, he saw sin. So he carried all of your sin. Now there's this man who also knows nothing about righteousness. Who knows nothing about righteousness? Why are you laughing now? <laughs> who knows nothing about righteousness? Did not do anything righteous? As in bread? As in fasted? Nothing. Only accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. The dreadlocks are still possibly there. The tattoos are still possibly there. But when God looks at him, God took the righteousness that was upon him and gave it to him. So that the righteousness he has is not the righteousness of works, fasting or anything. Is the exact same righteousness that Jesus has. So the believer does not have a right. That's why, you see, when we see uh, the worldly people sing songs sometimes that you know is revelational. Like when this guy sang, Nobody Holy Pass. Ah, uh, thank you. You know, it's, I won't mention the name. That tells you it's name. <laughs> All right, so. So he, 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 he did not, he said nobody only passed. So you see, the level of his righteousness, somebody, you know, I've seen people when we say go and pray, they say, ah, I can't pray for the sick now. I have to fast. I have to, I don't feel holy. So there is a feeling of holiness they want to have. There is a feeling of holiness they want to possess because they think that when they do 40 days fasting, you know, there's a way you feel like I've killed the flesh. So they think they have become righteous. No. Your righteousness cannot be improved. Your righteousness cannot be increased. Your righteousness cannot reduce. Because the righteousness you have is the exact righteousness that Jesus has. What happened therefore is simple. What Jesus did is that God has now decided that I'm going to see everyone through the lenses of Jesus. So what lens is God uses, using? He doesn't use Ferragamo. He used the son's lens. He used the son's lens. I was, anybody has a shade here? Dark shade? Blue shade? Anybody? Is it in your car? Oh, that's beautiful. That, let me have it. No, that's not a tear lens. That's the sun's lens. All right. I, I want to show you something here very quickly. So that when you pray, you pray with more audacity and authority. Are you following what I'm saying? Um... All right, so what's he wearing? That's a white shirt, have you? Now put it on. How does he look? I'm not saying model. How does he look? You know, some people are just sarkikos. <laughs> how does it? It has changed, right? It's now off white. Now, what happened is that God's lens is the lens of the blood. Every time he sees you, he sees the blood. Every time you pray, he sees Jesus. Every time you come into the room, he sees Christ. He's never seen you. It's not you. It is Jesus. Therefore, Bible says we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I say to devils, get out of him in the name of Jesus. What if he attacks me? No. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. I'm just an ambassador. It's Jesus he sees. The devil does not also see you. He sees the Christ. I remember many years ago, we were doing deliverance. Leave it in your face. We were doing deliverance. And one young man, one young man, listen to this. One young man looked at the devil. Get out! The devil started talking. You know, like you see in films and all these things that you people watch. They, Get out! <laughs> I can't go. Who are you? That nonsense thing that it's <laughs> And so, a lot of fake nonsense is going on in the body of Christ. Fake nonsense. Stupid rubbish. Even if you have the power to cast out devils, 
You see, the, the underlining principle about the gift of the Spirit and the underlining principle about the manifestations of the fruits of the Spirit and the manifestations of the supernatural, the underlining principle is love. So if I cast out devil and the cases had manifesting rolling on the floor, say I came my mommy, I, how is that love? How will she face her family? What happens to her? Is she going to go back to school if she's a lecturer? Who will be in her class? Ah, who my jam in my class? Eh? How does that edify anybody? You see, there's a lot of nonsense that goes on. But let me go back to my story. So this guy, the devil spoke through that guy. Say, who are you? Do you want to cast me out? Who are you? The guy said, I won't mention his real name. The guy said, I am tired. The devil slapped him. Pie. I've seen a lot. Of, as in, he's like, what we was, you know, we were just behind him. Kapashi, Kepele. We just had, Pai! Brother just went, and you know, you can't slap the devil back because it is not the girl that slapped you. It is the demon inside. And if you have seen demons manifest, it's not like she slapped you. It's a spirit that, so the thing, the guy will go, oh, later she was saying, oh, I just say, oh, in my head. So the devil, that demon, face the next guy. I say, who are you? Ah. I am born again. I'm a child of God. I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Greater is he that is in me. The devil said, oh. Then he started talking. The devil went. Why? Because he knew who he was. Listen, in the spiritual, they don't need your CV or your profile. They need your spiritual CV. It's not my name is Tayo uh, Alimosho. Uh, that's it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Uh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, whoever is in Christ is a new creature. All things are past. Uh, all things are new. I've become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There are certain prayers you pray that the devil begins to remind you of evil you have done in your past. When you start praying that you need a good man, the devil will tell you, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> you should just manage anything that comes your way. <laughs> As he says that, you remind him of who you are. Return the lens to the owner. I'll go back. Thank you so much. Do you understand what I just said? If someone tells you, ah, I think you have caught the flu. Even if you are coughing, say, I can't catch the flu. I can't. I can't. Ask her. Me only. Ata. In fact, the other time that I had, um, what's it? Apollo. She, I think it has come. I said it has not come. I said it has not. And I saw it red. Huh. I, there are things I don't say. I can't say it. I'm a new creature. Some of you are always looking for the devil. I assure you, I try alone in life, you. Hey, the devil did one in my life too. The way you talk is the reason why you are where you are. You just, traffic was bad, you say it's the devil. People call you, you miss calls, you say it's the devil. It's not the devil, it's you that not put your phone on ringing. Even if he's the one, there is nothing. You see, the devil is a proud devil. If you don't acknowledge him, he feels very disrespected. Stop acknowledging the idiots. Stop. All things work. Together for good. To them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Be witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all that believe. The Bible says for there is no difference. The same righteousness I have is what you have. Take that home. The same one Bishop Oedekwo has is what you have. Take that home. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ. The righteousness which is by God, by which God in faith. Amen. Amen. All right, let me give you two more. There you go. Skip some. My wife's looking at me some way. Next time, ensure you have your wife at the back. That you don't see the face. Amen. All right, we are blessed beyond the cause. Look at somebody and say, I am blessed. Beyond the course. The Bible says he has redeemed us from the course of the law. 
Listen, I don't know what cost is in your family's house. But whatever they call the cost, stop acknowledging it. Why acknowledge who you are in Christ Jesus? Bible says, cost is everyone who is hung upon the cross. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. We have become partakers of a new nature. We have become partakers of the promise. Stop saying, I told that woman, I said, stop thinking you are going to die. We are here together. Last year she did 50. Now the sons and the daughters don't have to bother anymore because she has broken it. I told her, I said, if you don't break it, your son and daughter will die also by 40. Don't break it. What is a cause? A cause is that which is set upon a man's life to stop the blessing. To derail the blessing. To cause a fish is to take it out of the river. To cause a snail is to take the snail into the river. No, sorry. To cause a dog is to take the dog into the river. It's to move you out of your comfort zone. To ensure that the normal workings of things will not work normally in your life. That's what is called a cause. You ask every girl out there telling you no. And you look at yourself in the mirror. Ah, ah, what are they seeing? It's not them. It is something upon you. But the Bible says he has redeemed us from that cause. It weakens me when believers believe and speak like he is still under a cause. You are not under a cause. Christ has delivered you and liberated you from all causes. Having been made a cause for you. Now you and I are blessed. And there are four realities we must walk in. Number one, I have changed kingdom. Therefore, I'm no longer of darkness. Listen to this. If they have called your name, you know, causes, they say it follows a family line. If they call your name, they will miss call on your own. You know why? Because you don't exist anymore. Bible says, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. So when they call you in that line, they can't find you because you are missing. You have been translated. That word translated is actually a very spiritual word. It means to transport somebody supernaturally. You have been disappeared from that lineage to another lineage. I'm in the lineage of Christ. In this lineage, there is no causes. I've taken a blood transfusion that you cannot link my blood with the blood of my grandpa. The blood in me is fresher. <laughs> it's the blood of a lamb. <laughs> it can be caused. I've undergone a spiritual transfusion. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Number two, I am a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The former person may have been cursed, but the new you is not cursed. Are you born again? Are you? Second Corinthians five seventeen is therefore true. If any man, <laughs> what is any man? Etier. What is any man? Elin. What is any man? Fisayo. Any man being Christ is a new creature. The Bible says the old is gone. NIV says the new has come. You've got to reintroduce yourself to yourself when you get to The new has come. The new has come. I am not saying there is no cause, but the new has come. This new man cannot carry the cause. That old man, you came late, devil. That old man you should have punished is there. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Paul says, um, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I. But Christ live in me. He said, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Is somebody being blessed? I'm connected. Number three, say I'm connected to the source of life. That's why nothing dies in your hand. Ah, Psalm 36 verse 9. With him is the fountain of life. And in his life do we find light. I'm connected to the fountain of life. I sometimes I just wake up and I say, I'm connected to the fountain of life. This fountain never runs dry. I'm connected to the fountain of life. Someone say, where is new business coming from? I'm connected to the fountain of life. I don't have to know them before. One minute before a miracle happens, it does not look like it's going to happen. But I'm connected to the fountain of life. 2024 is supernatural living. I'm connected to the fountain of life. In him is life. And in his life do we find light. Glory be to God. Somebody shout, I am, I am blessed. When your family people say, we get old before we buy a car, they agree. Don't argue. But shout it, I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. I feel somebody here will get a job that will shock even us church this year. Amen. People earning millions are not hydra-headed. 
they are one headed and you have a greater backing than they do. I hope you understand that it is not Julius Berger, it is not only how CC that caught animals for rituals. People that you walk together, they caught animals for rituals. People that you walk together goes to certain affairs and imagery for power to come. But I've come to announce to you but that, that they are backing lesser than your backing. How do I know? First John chapter 5 verse 4 and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. First John 4 4, the greater one is inside of you and the spirit that's inside of you has conquered God, the spirit that is inside the world. Somebody say, I'm a winner. Yeah. Don't go to work feeling emptied out. Go with praise. Go with a shout of rejoicing. Go with a shout of hallelujah. Go because the Lord has given you the city. Ransom house, the Lord has given us the city. Ransom house, the Lord has given us the city. We are not small, we are many. I have come to announce to somebody that I don't see hundreds. I see thousands and thousands. I've come to announce to somebody that greater one is coming. I've come to announce to somebody that the miracle is about to happen. Paul Shalia. What will you do, oh God? You see, I will turn the small to great. They won't start meeting in your house until you come. It won't start. I'm too blessed to be cursed. What did I say? Yes, Don't waste your time. Shake away from me. Don't waste your time. I'm too blessed to be cursed. I'm too backed up to be cursed. You see, your vocals must in release victory. Your vocals, I know some of you sing. Your vocal is modulation. But let your vocal release victory. I'm too blessed to marry an idiot. I'm too blessed to marry wrong. I'm too blessed to be poor. I can, ah, you know it. Sometimes, I can never be stranded. I can never be poor. What, what covenant? What covenant? He said the poor you will always have with you. But he didn't put your name. He didn't put your name. In all currency. In all currency. Glory to God. Somebody said to me, say, don't be rich in air. I want to announce to you, don't be rich in dollar. Be rich in pounds. Ah, yeah, Charlie has a different level. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And that leads us to number five. You are destined to prosper. You are destined to prosper. What would you expect of a God that owns the heaven and the heart? Surely it wasn't that he should be born in a manger. Is that not it? No, the son of man. The Bible says, ask no place to lie down. That's what Jesus himself said. He said, the son of man has no place to lie. This is a God that says, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. If you are not so, I will not tell you. He has a city laid of gold and he was born in a manger. What, what contradictions? What, 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 what manner of God is that? If our God can be poor, maybe we should also live a poor life. Because he came poor. How many of you are born in the manger here? I thought you said your parents were poor. How many of you are born in the manger here? <laughs> no, no. You, you say, you say, you know, we don't have money, we don't have money. How many of you are born in the manger? That you are born, and the first voice you had was, man, man. That's the first thing. You know, poverty has levels. Jesus came and recognized himself with the poor of the poor. I tell people Jesus was not poor, he was a pauper. There are two levels. There's poverty, there's penury. When they say penury, your own is done. He was born in a manger. Thank God. Thank God for, Cor for Paul that gave us an understanding. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and then verse 9. The Bible says, for we know our the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, I, I thought of it. He was rich now. Ah, ah. The maker of the heavens and the hearts. All things complete in him. The owner of all things. By him all things exist and subsist. God of heaven. Say, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, for your sake he became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. Shame on the devil. I will never let that exchange go without assessing it. 
That exchange must be assessed. That exchange must be assessed. I'm not poor, I am richer. I somebody. No, it's not by your salary. I told her, I said, maybe that, that means your car is coming. She did not laugh. She was still very, I said, your car is coming. Listen, nobody, uh, she's receiving it. You see, it doesn't have to be anybody. Listen, 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 listen. If Yahoo boys can do something and make money, it means there is a way people make money in the supernatural. If they can take a blood of somebody and use it by invoking spirits, they get into money. There is no blood that is greater than the blood of the Christ. It is not an 82 we will do tomorrow. It has been done. It is not a sacrifice to be done. It's been done by the eternal sacrifice. The yoke of poverty is broken. The yoke of stagnation is broken. Is somebody listen to me? That mindset must be cleared. All the mindset of buying Tokumbo cars, mindset of backing Tokumbo shirts. You know, the problem is not even Tokumbo car. The problem is Tokumbo shirts. Thomas, oh, Thomas Pink is, he says, thrift. What do you call it? A day came in my life, I said, no longer. White man cannot use something and I will take it. No longer. No longer. No longer. No longer. How can, some people even do underwears worn by white people and you wear it. People that they are in the UK that some of them cannot even, they cannot even take care of themselves. They now wear it for them and they embattle it and you wear it. Asha, kapuni, atai. There must be an irritation. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I will rather wear the ones from my other brothers. Let the, I wear the other brothers than wear something I don't know who took it from. What do you got to say? It has to come from your mindset. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Everything is talking about. Your hair is talking about. Everything is talking about. What's wrong with you? It's a mindset. Even the man you marry will be talking about. You say mindset. 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 You have to stop this year. Look at them and say, Pastor is talking to you. Stop this year. What am I talking about? Stop this year. My father the Lord said, he said to himself, I'm not going to buy a Tokumbo again. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not in the name of Jesus. I'm not. I'm not. We are not saying don't. You see, when I, if I was talking about Tokumbo Kana, he said, he doesn't want to kill us. But he's not killing you to be wearing a Tokumbo shirt. It's, not, it's, it's, it's a mad thing. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Stop wearing Tokumbo shirt. Some of you have to go and burn all of those things. If you don't have anything, just wear a neck shirt from from, from Balogun and just, and just put something on it. Jesus is God. Jesus is King. Jesus is the Lord. Just put something. Just inscribe and start wearing it. Supernatural living. Put supernatural living at the back, in front, on the head. Just do anything. Only believe. It's a mindset. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how to prosper. Yahweh has a different plan. Your background does not determine where you are going to be. Your background does not have to put your back at the ground. You've got to stand up and say, no, I see greater. It's your dream that the Lord fulfills. If you can see higher, you will get higher. Are you following what I'm saying? You've got to believe God for a miracle. You've got to believe God for the supernatural. Tell you poverty is a bad thing. I've been poor. Poverty is a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Don't let them lie to you. There's a way your shoe will not go where you're supposed to go. Because the sole of the shoe has gone down. And I'm walking like this and the thing is going like that. What's wrong with your legs? Sir? Pastor, there's nothing wrong. It's the anointing when it comes upon it. When it comes upon it. I was listening. I, I saw one of my pictures recently. Yesterday I was just looking at a picture. And I saw a trouser. That trouser was still very nice then. I knew when the trouser left me. I knew. It was sky blue color. It had become faded jeans. White. And you know, even the ropes, you know, there's a, this, this place, bed all the thing has removed, like two has removed. You've patched it, you, the front does not look okay. Because, I mean, it has seen better days. It's like a tire that has been worn out. Better days. There is nothing humble about poverty. If somebody is poor and you say he's humble, it's a lie. When money comes, it will reveal his true character. Money does not have character. Money is a revealer. Is a revealer. You are not. Some of you don't even know your character. You don't know until you get married. You don't know until you have money. Are you following what I'm saying? God has blessed you. You've been paying tight. 
and you understand that 20,000 you pay 2k the down God has just given you 200k now you are start calculating what would they do with 20,000 you want to now calculate with God it's a mindset poverty is coming small small it's coming it's, it's, poverty is a war this year we'll talk about poverty I've not started with you by the time I'm done I looked outside and I saw the cars outside I said God this is not your promise he said I know he said it's them he said it's them so I'm telling you, it's, I'm going to preach on supernatural abundance, supernatural provision, how you can access the things of God. There is a principle and a law concerning that. Let me give you one more so that you go home and go and think about these things. Is that okay? Is that okay? Two more. It's not one. I did not sleep tonight because of you. Babe. You are a partaker of his glory. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Look at that scripture. He said, in bringing many sons to what? To glory. To glory. The word glory is the word doxa. D-O-X-A. Doxa. What does it mean? It means dignity. What does it mean? It means praise. It means honor. God says to bring the sons to honor. To bring the sons to dignity. Literally, there's another word I love, which is the word doxia. Doxa, what does it mean? It means to evoke good opinion. Christ's death on the cross has invoked God's good opinion concerning us. So when God looks at us, he has good opinion. Have you seen people who have good opinions concerning you? There are relationships I have now that it was because of a friend. You don't know PFA! That's why you have been suffering. Good opinion. Say you have to go to him. Sit down. Oh, your problem is solved. He will just talk. Oh, your problem is solved. Good opinion. God has a good opinion concerning your life. You know why Jesus made that possible? That's what dogs are means. So when I see you, I don't see the human hair. I see the glory. You know that song? I see glory. You see when I come in, you just see the glory. Somebody say, boy, I'm not beautiful. Have you not discovered that beautiful people are getting married? A beautiful girls are not married. Glory. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. <laughs> that word is the honor, the dignity of the Lord. When you carry the dignity of God, something changes in your life. When there is the good opinion of God concerning you, people will have good opinion concerning you. Imagine, I said a man recommended me for good relationship. Is that not it? Imagine God recommending you. God spoke from the excellency of heaven and he said, this is my son. Hear ye him. That is what I call heaven's recommendation. You see, there is job in every sector. What you lack is recommendation. Some people say we will go to meetings and if people have gone to those meetings, you go to conferences, you are collecting 50 numbers. 100 numbers. You call them, they are not picking. You are frustrated out of life. So all those ideas they share with you in those poor, poor people's conference that they collect your 45k, 10k. Those things don't work. What works is God. God works. Are you following what I'm saying? Methods may fail, but God does not fail. Are you following what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody say, I carry his glory. I carry his glory. Many years ago, the Lord said to me, I will never forget. He said today, he said, I activate the cloak of my glory upon you. That was the day the ministry changed. I activate the cloak. So when I want to go out of the house sometimes, I'm coming for an anointing service. I don't do it every time so that you good does not fall every time. I say, Lord, I activate the cloak of this glory. Shima no siapa. I was even looking at his face. Even looking at his face. The raised there to the glory. I'll teach you about glory next week. Somebody excited about that. Amen. You now know one of the songs we will be singing, Abby. Yes, I would. Uh, My eyes have seen the glory of all. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, you have the victory. Somebody say, why do I step into supernatural? Because it's a cause I've already won. Listen, if you marry me, and you hear the things I want to go and do, or the things people are calling me for, you'll be afraid. Are you following what I'm saying? 
I came back from Bada. I was telling my wife, I said, I'm traveling. Then what happened? I gave her the two issues I wanted to travel for. Just looked at me like this. Tears was almost coming out of her face. I'd known. But I set my face upon the hill. And where it's come as my hell. He has called me. He will defend me and back me up. No devil can do shaggy where I am. It's either God defends me or he kills me. But you know why it does not work for you? Pastors, men of God, apostles, you count your life. We, we don't. It is dead. What do you I died many years ago before I got married. So you can't use death to threaten me. And I am attracts. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of a lamp and the word of their testimony. Bible says not unto death. What's up, you know, man? The two people have come to pray for this man and they have died. You will not go. I will go. I will go. <laughs> I will say, Jesus, should I go? If I hear go, I will go. And I will come back. Somebody follow what I'm saying? What does I say I will do? I will come back. I will come back. I will come back. I will go and come back. When we say we are going, we are going. When we want to die, we will raise our leg and we will go. But we are not dead now. Are you following what I'm saying? Never step into supernatural thinking. Maybe you will win. Maybe you will win. Don't do it. There's not a maybe. It's a battle that you already won. Don't face system, principalities, and demons with the possibility of victory. Face them with an assurance of victory. Face them with an assurance of the scriptures that cannot be broken. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 15, 57. Do you know what it says? Say, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Thanks be to God who leads us into triumph and makes manifest through us the savour of his knowledge in every place. The savour of his knowledge. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Heaven and earth may pass away but not a stroke of his word will go without being fulfilled. He say, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the heart. This is the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Dear folks, it is important to end with the word of Paul. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. What does he say? What does he say? He says, Finally. Yoruba will say, Niakota. Finally. Niakota ara. Finally. <laughs> Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Where is your strength coming from? Jim. Where is it coming from? Pando? Marijuana? Cocaine? Where? 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 Be strong in the Lord. Some of you are too weak. Too lily livered. You have dream, you wake up. You have dream, you wake up. You are praying two hours. After another dream, two that's why you have high blood pressure. The devil knows how to get you. Because you have not slept, you have high blood pressure. Sometimes you have dreams and you sleep and you sleep back. Because that time sleep is more important. That's it. That's how we get people. They have not slept well in the last 21 days. It's not God waking you up, it's dreams. Three hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are functioning like a madman. Even on the road, you are so angry. Somebody honks too much. You are shouting at the person because you are already almost mad. What you need, sweetheart, is sleep. Next time you have that dream, turn your pillow, turn your side. You say, I'm in Christ. And sleep. He giveth his beloved sleep. Dreams don't wake us up. Holy Spirit wake us up. When he needs me to pray, he wakes me up. I cannot be praying by that with the prayers because of dreams. I can't do that for 21 days. I'll be sick. One day I woke up, I think last week, I, I woke up and it was like suspended. I was suspended. That dream was why I was suspended. I thought pray. My mouth was so heavy. I was so tired. I said, ah, Lekopa Shakata turned to the other side and I slept off. No time. It cannot be awake and I'll be awake. He that watches over Israel never sleeps nor slumber. 
he giveth his beloved sleep. Stop boasting. I've not slept in two months. Oh, cool. You will die. Stop saying that. Don't do that. He giveth his beloved sleep. I can get it when the Holy Spirit wakes you up. But when dreams keep, dreams keep waking you up, the devil wants to get you. Therefore, you say, I, I, of course, I'm saying, what's going on? You have not slept. I don't even know. Maybe it's typhoid. Or I, I just treated malaria. I, the problem is sleep. Sleep. Efficient system, what does he say? Finally, be strong and in the Look at your neighbor and say, be strong in the Lord. What does that word power? What does it mean? Dunamis. And in the dunamis of his mind. Hey. Ibaru Kapalia. Let's just pray in the spirit. Three minutes. Wherever you are. Kapoli Brasha Kapali Adiaba. Ebrazo Kapalekla Tototovra Kaliba Roba Leka Yakayada Basha. Emra Tototo Valika Yeka Yakando Valivra Kosha Kapali Adiara Rosha. Mekeke Palika Roba Sata. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Fire on. Fire on. Be strong in the law. And in the power of his might. See Kapati Kapa. Eruka Palika Teketeke Lika Tapata Pata. Opera Kate Kalika Teketele Klada Basha. Omra de 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 Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Kapa 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 kata kapa li kata ba. Obra da kapa li kapa la kapa da ba da ba sha. Obra da 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 sha. Obra da 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 sha. Obra da 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 sha. Obra da 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 when Zion travel, Zion brought forth. When Zion travel, Zion brought forth. Make a pala kapa, baka pala kapa kato, ode baka la baka to, ebra kale baka to, ada da 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 ba da ba da ba da sho, omra da 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 da. Let it go, let it go. Baka pasha, baka pasha, baka pasha. Yes, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. E kapana mano kapia, pa kapa 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 kapa. A rope and a bashata out of your bellies shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. A kappa yaba 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 out of my bellies shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. Obra kaye kaye kaya 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 Obra kaye kaye kaya 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 Obra kaye kaya 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 Stop being undignified Stop being dignified in his presence Pray 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 Akono manamani ya basota I will pray, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make just on me. Ekarapo 
Oshiaramasi, if I don't pray, Satan will make just stop me. I will pray, I will pray. Ekapa, ekapa, Asha. Build up your faith. Build up your faith. Let it rise. Let it rise. Right now, begin to pray in understanding. Begin to call forth what you want to see in the next few weeks. Uh, the miracles you want to see. Uh, begin to call it forth in understanding. Uh, I thought now you will stand up. Uh, I thought by now you begin to declare. Uh, begin to call it forth. Uh, and so now, my kappa, uh, what do you want to see? Uh, I told you about sound dynamics. Uh, sound dynamics. Uh, Blessings are coming your way. Favor are coming your way. Promotion right now. Promotion right now. That deal is yours. That deal is yours. That deal is yours. New businesses. New businesses. Come on. All the promises of God. He lived there, yes, and he lived, amen. I receive signs and wonders. I receive promotion. I receive increase. I receive my healing right now. I receive my healing right now. Yes. Yes. That money is paid. That house rent is paid. Right now. Right now, supernaturally, yes, 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 that project is funded by God, it's funded by God, it's funded by God. You have one more minute. Come on, I love the way somebody's praying, I love the way some people are praying. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you are sick anywhere in your body, put your hands there right now. It's already done. It's already done. I just want to command it. Ye spirit of infirmities, whether you are online, on site, wherever you heard the tangible power of the Lord is reaching out to you right now. Right now. Ye spirit of infirmities, ye blood-sucking spirit, ye spirit that causes discomfort in the body, ye spirit that causes disease in the body, wherever you are in the organs, wherever you are in the body, in the systems, in the blood flow, Wherever you are in the earth, in the back, ye spirit of evil, ye spirit of wickedness, I stand in the name of Jesus. I stand on this solid ground, every other ground they are sinking sound. And in the name of Jesus, I hold you bound. In the name of Jesus. And I cast you out. Now to dry places. In the name of Jesus. Now. The healing hand of the Lord is coming upon you. Right now. Right now. I declare you are all in the name of Jesus. By the sacrifice of Calvary. By the reason of his stripes. You are all. Right now. Now wherever you are. You believe God for any healing. Whatever you couldn't do before. Start doing it. That pain is gone. No, no, just saying. You can check it. It's gone. It's gone. If you couldn't bend or if you, you, you jump too much, you feel a palpitation in your heart. I want you to just start jumping right now. All eyes closed. I mean, just start jumping. Just start jumping. Whether you are online, we are in the room. Just start jumping. You will discover the palpitation is taking away. 
He's God. He's God. I mean, you can beat yourself in those places where you used to hurt. You won't feel them anymore. He's God. He's God. He's God. Father, thank you. Every yoke of disappointment, they promise you, by the time you get there, they change their mind. Every yoke of disappointment, every yoke of cyclical movement, every yoke of stagnation, I break it now in the name of Jesus. And I declare, go forward. From today, that promotion comes. Somebody have been overlooked for a while. I hear God say, it is now. It is now. It is now. It is now. What a plan for evil will not work in your life. I declare you shall not die. No. No, no, you shall not die. No, you shall bury no one. No. In the name of Jesus. You are portioned to live, you live. You are portioned to live, you live. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands and just worship. Lift up your hands and just exalt. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.